Okay, I think we're good. As you can tell by the title of the stream, today I'm going to attempt to build the Lego City Volcano in Lego Worlds. So you already have some Rockler stuff built already. I'd say, along with this, we should be good there. Stream seems to be holding alright. Maybe. I hope I didn't just jinx myself. Okay. Ah, I'm gonna get started here. Uh, we don't need that. There we go. Uh oh. Uh oh. Oh, that was a little bit of a crash there. Okay, as you can see, we got, as you can see, I uh, brought some other Lego City builds. We got the, I think that's the 2010, 20, yeah, 2010 Fire Station Police Station, the Forest Police Station, and one of the newer Police Stations, Police Stations, Fire Stations, I think that's the 2013 Fire Station, but I'm not sure. But if I fail to do, let's start on the Lego City Volcano. Cat, don't chew on that. Cat's chewing on the cord. We're gonna need you. Four by eight. Please tell me sweet. Line up with these, I almost particular. There we go. Okay, I got that line down. We jump in here. Saved itself. That's not it. All right, where are you? Nope, found it. Like that. Ah, no, 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 no. Land off. There we go. Let me put that away for I said put that away for now. Go back here. Green. This goes there. There's some stone, medium stone. Eight by down. Oops, I thought by down. That.
Not that. That. Yellow. Let me need another rock. Let me in here. This rock. Land off. Is that correct? Yep. I decided for the lava. I could use like the paint the lava, but for now, we're actually gonna use the fluorescent radish orange. That goes there. Not there. Not there like that. Oop, not that. That. What is that? Two by three. Green. Okay, that is red. Thought I'm gonna do to make this easier. We're just gonna copy it because that's nice to say in the instruction booklet. Let's name it. Uh, well, let's just do that. There we go. Right there. And there we go. Then we can go back in here and we need to uh, grab some of that. Okay, slope.
And I just copy that. We can do. Double play outdoors. How are you doing? I'm doing good right now. You have been doing any fishing lately? Uh, up here. Like that. You have it been since Monday. I haven't been ice fishing yet either. There's too much snow on the lake to go. Once it's really strengthens up, he will be back at it more regularly. Yep. Yeah, I've been have there's been some wacky weather going on in here in Canada. One day it'd be nice and sunny out, and the next day it'd be snowing. I'm gonna hope it's a one by eight here. Yep. Hey, cat. Cat dropping by to say hi. Yeah, Mondays. Monday it was 60 and the rest of the week has been below freezing. Yeah. Hold on. I need to see what my cat's meowing about. Hey, you want a ball? No? Okay. Well, if anything, he doesn't want the ball. I do need here. Yeah, for the past week here, it's been down to 30 below. The highest it got up to in the past couple of weeks was only 2 above.
Ja. Yeah, I I don't know if I would take the the cold winters in Canada or the windy windy winters in Kansas. Yeah, yeah. Double player says you would take the wind over the 30 blow. I think I would have to take the 30 blow over the wind. Not where I get icy and get out fishing. And the one thing, one thing I do like about the wind or the rain is when it, or the rain is the walleye really like to bite when it's windy or raining. Yeah, the best time to fish walleye is either when there's a little bit of wind, cloudy, or raining. Are the best times to fish for walleye.
Man, some of the best places, if you want to find walleye, is if you can find a little swirl in the river, a little indent, with a, or in the lake, where I'm watching the river, and this little indent where the current flows around in a circle. The walleye like to hide in there to clean the girls. Or, if you can find an opening from the lake into a river, the walleye like to sit there and wait for the literary fish to come out from said creek back into the lake. If you're lake fishing them. You are being in lakes. Now then you wanna... Well, if there's a lake of walleye with a little creek flowing into it, I would recommend dry fishing there first, because that's where the walleye would be waiting for the minnows to come from the creek into the lake. But water temps are the best. Walleye like it in cooler water. The cooler the water is, the higher the walleye would be to the surface or the shore. The harder the water, the deeper the walleye is going to be. So you kind of want it kind of the lukewarm somewhere around there. That's why when I go out to fish walleye. I like doing it and uh, we should go out around 4 o'clock and fish into the evening. It's in the evening the water cools down and the walleye then come up from the deep into the shallow to feed. So you always want, if you want the best chance of catching walleye, is cooler water. When the water is cool and not warm. Yeah, yeah, I would fork, yeah, especially in Kansas where it gets hot, I would focus on them pretty soon. As soon as it gets hot out and that water warms up, the walleye is going to be deep, where it's cooler.
Now the thing about walleye is, you don't want to fish them deep if you don't have to. Because if you fish them deep, they swim, they can't release the air out of the swim bladder like a pike or a trout or a bass can. The swim bladder will pop and come out the mouth. And if you do have to fish them deep, reel them up slow so they can release the water, the air from their swim bladders. Yeah, what are some baits you would recommend? Well, for live baits, I would recommend minnows or leeches. Or if you want to fish plastics, I would go with a yellow, yellow white, or orange jig. Or if you want to fish lures, the red, white, the red and white striped lure works. Or the one lure I have that works for walleye is orange with black spots on it. Cool, huh? Is that correct? I think that was great.
You have Walleye, Saw Guy, and Saw Guy there. Yeah. I never heard of Saw Guy before, but I've heard of Saw Guy because I got him here in the river too. I catch the odd one while fishing for walleye. Here's a little fact about the Sauger. Sauger don't actually Sauger Sauger don't actually live in lakes. Sauger natural habitat is rivers, but as humans have moved Sauger. From the ri from the rivers where the natural habitats work, they like saga like flowing water, but we have moved them and put them in lakes, with the pike and walleye, where people can fish them in lakes. At least that's what we did up here, and that's what they got in our lakes. Is we used them as a seed fish for lakes. Come on, line up already. The saga is a man-made hybrid. Yeah, I think it was the bread of saga and the walleye together, right? Okay, good, yeah, that's what I thought it was. Ah, uh, I got it this time, not the cool. Wait, what? Oh, I see my idiocy. I see my mistake. I had one thing in the wrong spot. No wonder why I was having a terrible time. Uh <laughs> You gone. Where? There it is. There. Ah. You have more lake snakes of saw guy than anything. I think the easier to stock me. Yeah. Anything from the walleye family or a trout family where the easiest fish to stock in lakes. At least that's what my friend said and he used to work at a trout trout farm for stocking lakes.
Come on. There we go. Where, what, what, why, why? Why are you doing that, game? You didn't do it from this side. Okay, I'm gonna have to fix that. Another thing about walleye is when you do catch them, when you hold them, you're gonna want to squeeze the dorsal fin down. Because if you don't, it's gonna pop it back up and it's gonna jab in your hand. And let me tell you, those dorsal fins are sharp and have venom in them. So when you do get poked by them, it hurts like hell and causes a little bit of swelling. So always make sure when you pick them up, uh, squeeze that dorsal fin down. Unless you want a picture with it, and then hold it on, with your hands on the belly and away from that dorsal fin. That's what I do when I want a photo of them. Here, keep that in mind. Good. And let me tell you, I've poked myself with that dorsal fin more than enough times, and I still haven't learned my lesson. And also when fishing for walleye, be sure to hook him quick, because walleye are notorious for swallowing hooks on you. As they grab and swallow, so when they grab it, you want to hook it quick, otherwise you're going to probably be digging a hook out from the back of their throat. Which is not fun because then you end up keeping a fish you didn't want to keep.
What did you do now, game? What have, oh, I think I know. I think I was an idiot and didn't turn blend off. Yeah, while I would take anything. I've got a couple of hours fish for catfish. They took big live bluegill. Yeah, they will go for bigger, for bigger fish, depending on the size. But the also must have been pretty hungry to go for that big catfish hook too. You are probably using. And all at one time, I had a little, probably about a pound and a half walleye, inhale a big pike lure, big, big rubber minnow is using the fish for pike. And th until this day, I still can't figure out how that little walleye got that big ass pike minnow in its mouth. Up. Oh, yes, I was four hook. Yeah, the hook in the middle I was using for the pike was a size six hook. So I don't know how he got it in his mouth or why he even went for it. But I was impressed that little guy took it. Wrong button. Yeah, I screwed up here a little. The biggest hook I use for walleye is a 2 watt, sometimes a 3 watt. That it right. It is amazing what the small fish will eat. 
I've had uh, one two pound channel cats eat half a bluegill on an eight odd hook. That is pretty amazing. Another one time, a couple years ago, I was ice fishing for yellow perch. And of course, lots of fishermen up here for yellow perch. I'll use, small, use the minnows or maggots. And on the run rod, I had sitting in a hole a couple feet away from me, you had minnows. And the rod I was using had. Maggots on it for the yellow perch, and the one sitting over there just had to sit and see if it could pick up a walleye or something. Well, I got my mind blowing when I, when I got a heck of a nice bite of my, um, the rod I was holding, reeled it up, and there it was a five pound northern pike that had bit the hook with the maggots. And I didn't think pike. With, with head hooks of maggots on it, but apparently I was wrong. I do need to fix something here quickly. Wait, wait, what? What? Where's the last... Something's going on there, I'm not sure what. That's why I love fishing so much. You just never know what you're going to catch, yep. And did I tell you that last, that in the fall I got my first carp? 